We've been talking at great length over the past several months with various public school officials during the COVID-19 crisis and how they've been dealing with the pandemic. But what is it like for students at the private Catholic schools? With us now on the Megacast for the very first time, we're excited to bring in Brother Ken Kalinowski. He's the principal over at De La Salle, and then we'll have the president on in just a moment as well. Brother, Brother Ken, thank you for being with us. Thank you very much for having me and uh, welcome to De La Salle Collegiate. Thank you. I'm really um, interested in trying to talk and get your perspective on the COVID-19 crisis and how things are going over there at the school. Are you open for in-person learning right now? We are. We've been open uh, for in-person learning uh, all throughout this year until the governor uh, issued the mandate in mid-November. So then we had to go virtual. And uh, we stayed that way on all the way to Christmas. We came back the 1st of January and our parents, our staff, our students, I've said all year, I've never seen a group of happier students just to be in school. Uh, honestly, you know, anything you do for them, you hear uh, the faculty will tell you, we hear thank you a lot more. We hear my theme for the school year as I started uh, this year as my first year as principal here at De La Salle, I said, with COVID-19, this is the year of faith-filled flexibility. And it really encompasses that whatever is going to happen, we have to trust in God's providence that as long as we're doing the best that we can for the students that we serve, then we have to be flexible. And we have to realize that we're all in this together. Uh, COVID-19 has hurt uh, every aspect of our society. Uh, you know, right now the restaurants and uh, bars and stores are still hitting at public schools. Uh, my sister teaches in a public school and uh, she is, you know, it, her, she sees her students one fourth each day in person. Here at LaSalle, we have, uh, what we have purposely done is uh, we have split all of our classes and use every possible bit of space. We, have, we made our cafeteria a classroom, our band room a classroom, even our gym was a classroom for a while. And uh, we've been able to have the separation and make sure that everything is safe. And so uh, our enrollment, uh, if anything, in the beginning of uh, August, you know, we were wondering where we were gonna wind up if, and we just picked up another three, four boys today as we begin the second semester. People want, I like to say, not only a Catholic education, but they want it in person and uh, we provided that safe niche. If we can go ahead and bring in Larry Rancilio right now, he's the president over there at De La Salle. Thank you for being with us uh, for this conversation as well, president. You're welcome, you can call me Larry. Larry, <laughs> so as someone who is the president of the school, what is it like to go into some of these decision-making times and knowing that COVID-19 is in our community, people are dying, but having to make those decisions about in-person learning and putting the procedures and the protocols in place to make it a safe environment. You know, Ronnie, it's funny you asked that because in the beginning, back in the summer, when we were talking about these things, it, it, it was an unknown. I mean, we really did not know what, what was gonna happen. So we took, as Brother Ken said, everything that the CDC and, and our local health department said, this is what we need to do. Um, uh, you know, the, the social distancing, the masks, I, we have, I mean, we've been lauded in terms of the, the procedures that we put into place. It was a 40 page um, procedural booklet that we put together. And, and then when I rolled it out to the teachers, got questions from them, but we still, when we started, we didn't know what was gonna happen. We, we literally thought a hey, 10, 15 days, maybe we're gonna have something. Well, we went 52 un uninterrupted days until the, until the um, in school, until the governor put the pause on uh, 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 on the school without an incident, with no contractions internally. And we only had four kids, but one was the same family. So three instances internally. So we knew after about a month or so that we were doing things the right way. When nothing happened, where a lot of these other schools were getting shut down, we just, we got good kids. I mean, as, as Brother Ken said, I mean, these boys and, and teachers that want to be here, so they'll listen. I mean, we have the occasional, you know, mask down, they put masks up and, and, and those type of things, but we were nervous. I mean, because we, it was an unknown. We feel a lot more comfortable now when the, when, when the governor um, 
came out with that pause and, and, and the lawsuit came into play that, that man's put together and you may might, uh, we're part of man's. So we really, we were actually prior to that looking at what do we want to do? Because is there something that we want to do um, through the court system? Because we want our kids back in school. Our parents were calling us because we're do, we really showed that we're doing things the right way. And, and so with that too, Larry, uh, where is the lawsuit? Where does it stand right now? Has it been dropped because no, students are back in? What happened there was it, 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 initially um, we filed uh, for an injunction and that got dropped because the governor took the pause off. But but there's still a court case. There's still a hearing. And it's really separations, church and state, um, you know, with regards to to allowing us to come back to school. I mean, our contention, though, Ronnie, was not the separation of church and state. We like that. We like to make our own decision. But when we went into that lawsuit, we really we brought a because I had our attorney, our, our, law, our attorneys take a look at this stuff. Ours was not the constitutional separate separating church and state okay that helped us our our angle was we're doing things the right way you know we're showing kids can be in school people can be in school people can be in this institution if you're doing things the right way and not get not get things con or not get anything contracted so although we're a part of the, the 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 lawsuit and if we win or when we win it'll be good for us the us walking into that or going into it was from a different um, theory or looking at a different so Larry, as part of this conversation and the discussion also has to do around some of the funding for the schools. Now we do understand that you're a private school. So for the families that can afford it, you are a great option, but what about the families that can't afford attending a school such as yours? Well, the beauty of our school, Ron, is we've always told families if, if, if your son wants to come to school here, we'll find a way to make it happen. And, and now we have a financial aid process that they that they need to go through. But if they qualify, I mean, that that's part of our, our charism of the school and the foundation of this institution. So we don't want a family not to take a look at us because they feel tuition is, is a hindrance. And that's what our St. John Baptist de La Salle, who are is our founder, that's how he built his schools in France. So, I, you know, we need to get that message out so 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 families will take a look at us because sometimes they shut us off and say hey well i can't afford that well we don't want that that to be the case and we've got some great alums and great donors and that, that help out i mean we, we give over two million dollars of assistance every year as well as i mean really even more because we discount our tuition anyway it costs us a lot more to educate a kid than what our tuition is anyway so it's but it but it is a hard thing i mean i i, I, I it's still difficult Brother Ken, if we can bring you back into the conversation, how has learning changed during COVID-19 for the students? Well, you know, I think, it, you know, everyone says the new normal, but I, the boys really enjoy what we're doing. We have split every class. There is not one class larger than, I'm going to say, anywhere from 15 to 18, where in the past you might have a class of 30. Because we've, set, you know, kept the, the social distance uh, six feet away from everyone, there's a lot more individual attention uh, and we've utilized every space in the building. Not one faculty member, you know, as we all know with the pandemic, uh, it has been hard for any business to maintain all their staff. DLSL made a commitment that not one faculty member was displaced. So we've used everybody uh, to teach and we, we've also changed our class uh, periods where instead of an eight period day, the boys have four classes for 80 minute periods uh, with lunch in between and then the next day for 80 minute periods so that it lessens uh, any kind of co social contact uh, going from room to room. We want to make sure every desk is you know, thoroughly cleaned and sanitized. The locker rooms, uh, no offense to anyone who knows anything about boys in locker rooms, uh, usually smells bad wherever I've been, but these have been the cleanest locker rooms in the history of uh, a school year because, you know, everyone has done everything preventive to make sure things are clean, things are sanitized. And as Mr. Rancilio said, the students are just anything we've asked them to do. They're just happy to be here. And uh, I think one thing parents, and not that they haven't in the past, but I think with a lot of the homeschooling and the virtual parents have realized that teaching is a hard job. Uh, trying to teach your own uh, can be, you know, oh my gosh, uh, and maintain your job and everything. So there is a lot more appreciation for the teaching profession. 
And I think the students realize that, especially when we had the pause. We had that pause in November and we went virtual. And I would pop into every single teacher's class virtually just for comic relief. But the idea just to see, you know, boys learning at home in their pajamas, on the, in the sweatshirt, it's not a good look, you know, and what are they getting? You know, what are they missing? By being in school, you're able to have your labs. You're able to have one, just contact with each other. And, uh, and as of this Friday, us going to the state football championship, which we thank the state of Michigan for letting football continue uh, because I truly believe things are safe in the sense as, as long as people are doing smart things. Our boys are being tested for COVID three times a week. Uh, so we have not had these issues where people have said, hey, what if, what if? Well, what ifs haven't happened here? And we've been very blessed. I was just about to ask you about some of the extra activities because for so many people, school really is about the social activities. And while you are there for an education, it is also an important part of the education as well. Has that taken any type of step back during the COVID-19 pandemic for your students? I think all of us would agree it has. And as my theme with the faculty and Mr. Rancilio has reiterated time and time again, you know, our boys are only 15, 16, 17 in their lifetime. And so as much as we can have a normal school year for them. So our robotics team, uh, we've had robotics come in on Saturdays. We had over 35 boys show up just to build robots because they're with their friends. Uh, we have a, every year a Jeopardy tournament uh, after school. That has continued, Model UN, mock trial. So the, we haven't been able to do the field trips. And of course people say, hey, what about prom? And we have, we have to look and wait and see what Macomb County uh, and the health department allows. And you know, no one can predict where we'll be with this the COVID uh, virus, but I keep thinking things are getting better. So that will open more and more things up. But uh, if we all stay positive, you know, I'm one of those that the glass has half full instead of half empty. So Larry, if we can go back to you, when the governor announced that she wanted all school districts to return to some type of in-person learning by March 1st, what was your initial thought to that? Because you were fighting to stay in school. Well, I, I think it's great. I mean, I think it's great for the kids. I think it's great for the communities. And, and I, if we can get, Brandy, to go back from what you said to ask brother about, about the, the extracurriculars, and this will bring you in, bring me into what you're just talking about. That's what these kids need. I mean, you can get education anywhere. I mean, wherever there's a good teacher, kids can get an education, you know, it, it'll be brought to them. We do a great job of educating kids, but I think the environment is really what we um, really is really what our school is all about. And so when you take away some of that environmental stuff, I had some town hall meetings back in, in the beginning of, of the year with some of the parents um, via Zoom. Um, and we did one in the in the um, uh, prior to the 25 people in, in the uh, gymnasium. And I got a lot of good feedback. And but one, of, one of the feedbacks that the, that the, the parents talked about is, is that connection. And can we do some things for the boys outside of school because they're only seeing 50 or 60 kids where they normally see 200 kids because bro what brother ken said you know we, we we extended our periods there's less flow in the hallway so when he when she said we're you know you need to have some type of in-person learning i thought man this is great for education and they, but better for the kids i mean i think they need that so we need those extracurricular activities and we try to do we're getting very creative we're trying to get creative in terms of how we do some of the social things with the boys i mean the the, the things Things that happened over the course of the last two months that are limiting our time together has hurt us but that'll expand a little bit hopefully after february 1st we can do some of those, some some things too but you know things like the play things that that you know those types of activities our band did a concert um for christmas and we had them spread out in the gym i mean it was crazy how far away and but it still sounded great but you know what it's something that they looked forward to every year they had masks on unless they were playing but it was it was all and and, and I, I, they they had two guests me and the guy filming filming it but that's all they could have you know and, and that was the sad part for parents now we taped it but but i thought boy this and and the other thing that i saw 
is that interaction. Brother Ken talked about. We had some distance learners, Ronnie, that that were that decided that they're or Virgil that decided because of family situations, um, they they stayed home in, in, in the first semester. Well, a couple of them came back in, in in November because they saw things were going well. And what we saw is not two things we saw. One that the kid was happy to see their friends. But what we also saw was how many of their friends reacted when they came. Like we didn't realize how many kids missed that kid, you know, and so so that's what you get. And that's what, you know, again, this this our institution's all about is those relationships as much as anything else. But that what I mean, that's any high school. I mean, and that's why it's good for these kids to get back. So I know some of the teachers are a little nervous, but I can contend here that if you follow the guidelines, you know, you will be safe. You know, that's a big thing. And, and with that, we do know there is the vaccine rollout and teachers are eligible right now. Have members of your staff been able to get those vaccines? Yeah, go, brother Ken, you want to count? Only a very few. I know Mr. Rancilio is a lucky man. He's on a list. But you know, I think right now everyone's having the same problem that you hear in the community, that trying to get a hold of the health departments and all that is almost like winning the lottery. And there's only so many viruses, uh, uh, vaccines vaccines available. So unfortunately, uh, when you we, when someone tells me, hey, I'm going to be out tomorrow because I, I have to go get the vaccine, I'm like, good for you. You know, uh, I, one, I don't want you to miss a school day, but I'd rather you get the vaccine. But uh, and if you know anyone, uh, please put me on the list. You know, <laughs> so. you know we've been encouraging our, our any staff member to, to, to get it ready. I, I spoke to, to Mark Ackle yesterday that we were the county exec for quite a while about, hey, how can we do that? Can we get our teachers? And he said, Larry, good luck. I said, I, he said, I am more than willing to help. I'll bring someone there, but we just don't have the vaccines. I mean, they're they're ready. There's 300 and some odd thousand people in Macomb County that are eligible, and they had 4,000 shots this week, even 4,000 available this week. So obviously there's some issues with regards to that. And, but we were definitely, we had, our, we had a teachers meeting on uh, Friday, and we encouraged you know them to get it. So. So we have heard um, from school districts throughout this entire pandemic, they all pretty much said, we know schools are not the cause of the spread. However, we can't control what's happening outside of the school. What's right. happening at your school that has allowed you to contain the virus and, and not have it spread through the halls of your school? Well, a couple things. First, the school put in thermal uh, cameras in every entrance. So the boys have to go through a thermal entrance. We also have a nap each morning that they, uh, it's called clear to go. They have questions to fill in if they, three or four questions on how do they feel? Do they have a fever, et cetera? If they answer yes to anything, then right away stop. You know, uh, they have, wearing a mask is not an option in the building. You must wear a mask. You're seating socially distant. Uh, teachers have plexiglass in front of their desks if they feel that they need to stay there. Uh, so, and we have uh, hand sanitizer uh, stations throughout the building. So everything that we've done uh, as far as, you know, we have a trainer on staff, medical staff, every morning at 7.30 uh, till 8.30 each day to check if, the, if a, one of the boys comes in sick or he's not feeling well. So it's kind of like we've been going through and. The boys have been smart because they realize that if you get sick, you're not only affecting yourself, but you know there will be a ripple effect because we will have to look at who were you in contact with. And uh, so I think people are just thinking smart, uh, not to be mean to adults, because we as adults are sometimes a little more stubborn or we're, we're used to not changing. But when you tell a high school boy, this is what you have to do, usually they're like, okay, Thank you, thank you. You know, and uh, we don't have, you don't have these issues. And our students do, do listen. Real quick on that too, Ryan. But I'll just give you the example of our football coach because I throughout this the whole course of things, what he did because I would go to some practices and and, and listen and did a great job. Uh, coach Roan would would talk to these kids about remember when you go home, you know, 
you're affecting this whole our whole season, your program. So when Brother Ken sends information out on a weekly basis, he reminds people that you know over the Thanksgiving holidays, you know. It, it, so when we had the couple kids that were out and was because of a hockey practice, and we can we can you know I mean contract traced it, and then the 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 awakening to that was these kids realized, oh, if I do something outside and I'm not careful, it's going to come back. So things like that have helped us. I mean, we have, we have just great kids. I mean, that, that'll listen, but, but, you know, the, 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 I think that's the big thing from what you're saying that we continually also counsel them that what they're doing outside these, you know, walls also affect what goes on in here. And they're pretty good about that. Well, Brother Ken and Larry, we so appreciate your time and we want to say um, good luck at the uh, state championship as well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thanks. you. Go Pilots. Thanks for having us.